the idea first came to us, uh, three of us, in uh, about 2013, the middle of 2013. And what was interesting is it was, in fact, uh, two Chitsonga speaking friends, one Avatsonga, the other Amashangana, and a lady who is Chivenda Konanani Matiwa. And in fact, we were at her house discussing the history of the first contact between those three groups of people and the role of the Portuguese. Uh, and uh, I then asked them about who Taban was. I'd recently discovered that Vuani, in the days of the Transvaal Republic, used to be called Lukati van Taban. And I said, who is this Taban? And they didn't know. Uh, and I teased them by saying, it surprises me that people who are so respectful of the ancestors know so little about what those ancestors did. And Konanani Matiwa said to me, you know, Terence, you are right to scold us. But you know books, you know a little bit of all of our languages, you know a lot about the people, why don't you do something about it? So I thought what would be better would be to approach uh, the story of the past by developing a series of readers that could be used in the language classroom, in the English language classroom. English for two reasons, because most of our learners obviously are studying in that language and need to improve their literacy in it but also because it gives access to the story of all South Africa's people to all South Africans. If Tibanyika and Makado, for instance, were in Chivenda, it would only be accessible to Chivenda speakers. Um, and that's precisely what we did. Uh, but because the series is entirely unique, there's nothing like it available in South Africa at the moment. It's been very pleasing to see how many adults um, are buying the series as an introduction to the stories of the past. But I think that you're well aware that there are huge variations in literacy levels, not only across age groups, but also within classrooms in this country. Uh, and um, the stories have been written with that young reader in mind, trying to, uh, almost by stealth, lure them into uh, understanding that history, far from being boring is really fascinating and extremely relevant. It's one of the few ways, in my opinion, that a young person, in a sense, can gain experience, the experience of the lives of others. And even though they lived so many years ago, the ancestors that I'm focusing on, and even though their lives in South Africa were very different to what we know today, they, they still there are still common problems. Um, and it's interesting to find out. At this stage, I do think it's more important that we cover more of the past of our people. For instance, I haven't yet touched on the sand. I haven't yet touched on a number of Isikosa uh, speaking peoples of Southern Africa. I mean, I, I spoke yesterday and a lot of people have the view that if you speak Isikosa, you are Amakosa, which is not true. Amakakabe, Amakaleka, Amabalu, Amaponumiso. I mean, we can go on for ages. And each of those clans has a very interesting story to tell about their past. We have already identified another 70 stories that we would like to tell. Then we've got Lang the rebellion of Langa Libalele. Uh, we've got um, Pangazita's uh, Hlubi. We've got, oh, I, I won't go into it, I won't bore you, but that I believe has to be our focus because so little has been done over the last innumerable years. Because so often these are events about coming together and the MEC or the Minister will say a few words about how important it is to know about heritage, but in fact they can't talk in any detail about that heritage, unless it's the recent heritage. Um, and then it's undoubtedly some food and drink and dancing and everybody goes home. Uh, so I think that we need more, we need to expose our citizens more to our heritage and what better way to do it, in my opinion, than through books that could be made available to learners in the country.